Welcome everyone to our 88th webinar of this series that we started uh, a little over a year ago. And um, uh, this one, we have Matt Romanowski here from Trail Break joining us again. The, uh, what we're gonna talk about is favorite profiles in Ray Studio 3 analysis. That, that's the topic, that's the title that we, that we uh, have come up with. But I think, you know, the, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more as we get into it, but the, um, yeah, we're gonna share some, some ways of looking at Ray Studio 3 analysis, but it's also, I think there is some tie into maybe setting up some of your profiles in different ways if you're using Ray Studio 2 analysis. So uh, some things you won't be able to do in Ray Studio 2 analysis, but uh, if you have not uh, uh, downloaded and, and got the link for Ray Studio 3 analysis, the beta program, uh, you yeah, don't worry. It, uh, it might see some things here that might, uh, might transfer back and, 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 and change the way you use Ray Studio 2 analysis profiles as well. So, so uh, take a look and see what you think. Again, give us, give us some questions. If you, uh, if you have some on uh, as we go, something you might want to see, something you don't quite understand, make sure you let us know. I appreciate it. The, uh, to introduce Matt a little bit, it doesn't need a ton of introduction here. He's, the, he's on his 10th um, uh, co-host role here with us uh, at our Learn Fast webinars. The, uh, the Matt's a, a name dealer, you know, leading technical and stocking aim sports dealer. Runs out and does a, uh, you know, some of his own seminars and track coaching and and uh, support and sales and and he's a he's a pro racing dag as well, you know, data data guy. Uh, really is a, a enthusiast for data, motorsports, anything electronics, things that we're talking about here today. So I appreciate you doing this, Matt, and uh, as you've done so many in the past. And uh, you have anything else to kind of you know give us a little bit more background on you, some things that maybe some people don't know. Uh, you know, I think that's kind of a lot of it. I got into this uh, kind of lifelong, grew up going to racetracks and everything, and then got a Porsche 914 when I was 20, I think. And then uh, in college, turned it into a pretty cool track car, which actually got out of winter storage this weekend. Uh, and then so the, so your uh, your yellow 914 is the, is the same car you started driving in high school, huh? No, it was. I have a green one, too. Yeah, so two of them. Okay. The original track car. And then okay. uh, it was about 15 years ago, got the yellow banana and uh, started tracking that a whole bunch. And then now it's got 88 channels of data in it, pretty soon to have 89. Um, <laughs> so we just keep, I, I keep putting things in and I use it kind of as the rolling test bed to, to try everything out. So when somebody has a question on how something works, I've got it in there. Perfect. And, uh, you know, a couple more um, little, little things just to go over before we get started. The uh, In the chat box, there's lots of links that are being sent into there. Uh, it, we're going to talk about some links. Uh, one of the questions we just had, can you put Race Studio 3 beta download link into the notes? Um, uh, Robbie, I think, has already done it over into the chat box. And if you're watching this on YouTube later, everything we mentioned that is going to be a, a link in the in the, the live chat will be down in the description uh, of this uh, of this YouTube video. So everything that we're going to talk about, you'll be able to get to uh, get there as well. And that for the folks that are here live, if you didn't get it through the chat and you, you said, boy, I missed it and I forgot to get it before we closed it up, uh, come come back to the YouTube video and you'll uh, you'll have all the links there as well. So what we're also going to do is we're going to make uh, um, some of the, the we're going to make all of the profiles that you're going to see are going to be uh, available for you to download and then import them into Race Studio 3 beta and also uh, the set of one of the sets of data you're going to look at today with uh, uh, some data from Matt that is uh, uh, has video and data that data is also available for you to download if you uh, if you just uh, just getting Ray Studio 3 beta and you want to try it out with some data and then be able to follow along with some of the stuff that we've done and make your screens look like what we're doing today so keep that in mind and uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and get started Matt anything else you'd like to add before we uh, kind of jump right straight in and get going no I'm excited to get going Perfect, perfect. So I'm going to bring up Ray Studio 3 into our screen. The, um, the first thing I want to do is, ju is just talk a little bit about uh, the, the makeup. Uh, some of you uh, are, have, have grabbed the download of, of Ray Studio 3 beta and you've been working with it a little bit. Um, there are a number of people that are starting to transition and start to use it quite a bit uh, at the track. 
there's a, it is beta software, so there is always some risk there, obviously. Um, just an update for those of you that have been using it or had it installed, there should have, just this morning, there should have been a, uh, if you go up to the, to the cloud up here in the upper right corner, there should be a little arrow there and there's a, uh, a nice fresh version with a, a long list of bug fixes and functional enhancements that have been added just, to, just today. So uh, what we're using here today is, is 3.50.48. That is the version that's available to you if you, uh, when we get done watching here and uh, go and update your Ray Studio 3, you will have this version so uh, of the beta software. So uh, keep that in mind. And, um, and then the other part is the, what user profiles, what we're really talking about here is, is preferences for you. This is not, this is one of those things that it's hard for me as a support guy. And, and all of our, 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 our AIM techs, they, they call and say, well, well, you know, send me a profile that, uh, that, that takes care of things for me, but it's, they're very personalized. And so what we're, uh, what we're gonna talk about here is, is, is as much the shape and where you put things and, and, but it is as much to just give you some ideas of start, ways to start thinking about, boy, that, well, that was kind of cool, but I, you know, it would really work better for me if the map was up here in the upper right-hand right corner, right? Don't worry as much about that we've got a, a presentation here with, a, with a, a scatter plot with dots, and you might want lines, or you might want them red. It, it, it's whatever you wish, right? What we're going to talk about is just give you some ideas, and then we're going to be showing you how to, to, uh, to save them, and, uh, and then, and then, uh, uh, continue to load them and, and do different things, including a bigger picture uh, change in the way that you might want to use them. Matt, Matt has a little bit of a different approach, which I happen to agree with in the way that I probably would do it. And then, and Matt's going to kind of show you some of his stuff. And then we're going to end with, with an approach that I've kind of taken that uh, uh, where we, where you throw up a whole bunch of different tasks and Matt, Matt, Matt has got it where you, you know, let's load one and you get one view and then, and then you load a whole nother user profile where mine has many tabs. So uh, we, we'll see which one uh, kind of works better for you. So uh, at this point, I think what we're going to do is kind of trade this over to, to Matt to control. He's going to just kind of talk about five or six different, different ones he's set up, talk about why he's done them a certain way, give you some ideas, you know, play around a little bit, and, uh, and then move on to the next one. So Matt, I am going to give you the control of the mouse, and then I'm going to try to stay away from my... Uh, where, 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 where oh, there it is. Oh, you already grabbed it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It kind of surprised me there. You I couldn't <laughs> find your name. Uh, so it's, it's all set up. You go ahead and click once and, uh, and, and talk about this one. This one's kind of a basic one. It's a friction circle. If you look up in the upper left corner, you can see where the name of the, them are. Matt, maybe start off with, with grabbing the, uh, the options button there and talk about uh, where you would load these and, and save them out from and maybe start, start in that area. Yeah. So, uh, my general idea with sort of the profiles that I'm sharing here today is I wanted to give people something that would work with their data, no matter what their logger was, that is things that we've talked about since we've started these webinars. So I looked, the first one I thought was, you know, friction circle. It's a really popular thing. It's a great way to study what you're doing, driving and everything. So I said, well, let's give everybody one that's really easy as a jump start to Race Studio 3. And to pull these profiles up, is if you see up here in the top left, we have this gear icon. And when we click that, we can load profiles. Um, one thing that it, that's caught me a couple of times that is maybe a little bit different than how we did this in Ray Studio 2 is that it does not list the profile that you're on. Um, and a couple of times, and actually right before we started this recording, I looked at it and I said, oh, Roger missed one. And then I realized that the name of the profile you're on is listed in the tab at the top, along with your session name. Um, so that's a little bit different and it can catch you out if you're really used to the Ray Studio two way. If you've never used it, it, this will seem natural. So we click on the, the gear icon and then we can load a profile. These are the profiles that I have saved on my machine right here. Yep. The, there's going to be a link in the in the chat box that if you don't have any that you've built already, that there's going to be a, a, 
a, a, a file you can download off of the internet that, uh, that I've built uh, that include these very ones. And then you can do the import profile uh, button and bring them into yours. And then your screen will look exactly like this. So that's how you get those here. And if you were happen to build a new one, it would just be added to the bottom of the list and you're, and you're off and running. So, yeah. okay. And in this same screen, you can export them, you can save them. You can, if you change it and you wanna save it as a different name, you can save it as a different name. Um, and once you load the profile, you come up and you have the, the profile. Um, as I've played with this, and I really use the word played because with Race Studio 3, I've been using it since the first releases. And as I've gotten into it, I keep finding these new ways to look at things and to kind of slice and dice my data and realizing how powerful it is to do everything. So it really has become sometimes more play than just to now analyze because I'm looking at it and all the different ways that I can do things to see what other um, visualizations really speak to me as I'm doing it. So in this one, I pulled up a profile is, is just a simple um, friction circle that we all have. And we have a friction circle in the middle of the screen. Below it, we have longitudinal G-forces. We have the storyboard on the bottom with all our laps, our channels list, and our track map. Um, this is one that I, I kind of like looking because you can say, hey, in this break zone, as I click, it will give us our point in the map. You can see it here. Um, along with where on the track, we get our indication down here on the map. So it's a pretty powerful, quick way to look at it. Um, the other kind of things that I've started using that's a little bit different is I also use up here in the top right, um, a button we didn't used to have that is now one of my favorites is this lap button. When you click that lap button, you can say select your best lap or you can go all laps. And what's a really neat thing is you end up with this image, which gives you your whole session worth of data to see the trends of how the person's driving and what goes in that friction circle. When you look back at the other friction circle, webinars we've done, this tells you a lot about a driver. Um, a little bit advanced to just the profile part is when we right click on it, we can change all our settings and we can actually put colors to this and pick what we would want to colorize it from. So we could maybe say brake pressure. We're gonna make this thing do some work and we can see it puts brake pressure there. And this is a graph that kind of makes sense to us that we have our most brake pressure in the straight line it tails off as we're cornering. And then as we get towards zero and we're starting to accelerate out of corners, you know, there's not brake pressure when the car's accelerating. Um, Ty says a great question here. Can you colorize the plot by lap number? And the answer is certainly is we can go in and say, um, reset the color and it'll color it by the lap number. It gets, Kind of a um, yeah. With this many laps, that's kind of a problem. But but you know, a with lot. a couple of laps, it's not so bad, obviously. Yep. But what's really cool, you know, back to my current favorite button. When we go back to best lap, we can then turn on a few laps and have a and there you got that, and there you got your colors that we can make sense of that we don't have too many. So I think this is a really good way to do it. Um, Emiliano brings up another way that he taught us, um, and I remember it was one of our guest hosts, Joe Hewlett, brought up, is another way we can do this to get all the laps in if we want, is we can use our snap button on a time distance right here. You may and want to get down can... to just a single lap before you do that, or else it's going to it's gonna try to swell up all four of those. All right, so let's so, go. There you go. Slap, my favorite button. Emiliano's favorite button yeah. is we can turn snap off, and then this button is our zoom reset and it'll put us out all the way. So we get back to that whole session um, view. So these are not necessarily profile things, but these are really good ways that you're gonna interact with your profiles as you look at your data. But, um, but, but, but let, let us add though, that if you have set it up to be in snap mode and you, you're ready to do something and you save that profile, that is the way it's gonna be ready to be displayed to you. So there, there is a tie to your profiles, even though, uh, the, though you were talking about a specific function. Yeah, uh, so this one I set up is a very basic profile and everything works the way as if you just added windows and main. The next profile I wanna show you is a little bit of a variation. So we go back to our gear icon to pick it. We 
load the profile and I called it friction circle advance just to make them look different. And at first look, it looks pretty similar. It doesn't look too different. The differences in it is if we look down here at the time distance plot, we have a GSUM math channel in here that AIM gives us in the, the math channels. We have the latitude or um, the lateral and longitudinal acceleration. And then we have just speed in the storyboard. And here to do this one, I used uh, the feature to use different measures in different windows. The other thing that I did in this one, and it's one of the things in kind of how I interact with the software, which I know is a different thing than Roger, is I don't always like to have the storyboard at the bottom. And a really cool feature in Race Studio 3 is when we hit the space bar, we can get rid of things. So now I'm going to do it again. If we have this view and we have our channels and our laps over here, we have our storyboard at the bottom. When we go with the space bar, we can get rid of all these things and now just have this big piece of data and graph to look at. Turn it back so on, this, Matt, and show us how you do how you set it up to get rid of uh, individual uh, items when yeah. you hit the space bar. So to do it, the right click functionality in Race Studio 3 is really powerful. So if we're over the storyboard, you can see I'm kind of bottom middle. We right click and then choose settings. And these are the settings that go with this panel, the storyboard panel. So I said to allow different channels and to hide the space bar when it gets pressed. And then I did the same thing over here. On, and I said, hide it. So now when I hit the space bar, we can remove those items. Oh, there we go. So to me, this is a good one because so many times when we're at the racetrack, we have limited screen real estate on our computer. And especially if you have a 13 or a 14 inch laptop, um, it gets hard to get everything to a scale that you really like. And if you're like me, a 17 inch laptop is just too big to carry around all the time. So this maximizes that view of what you're looking at. So I think it's a really, really powerful feature in how these things all go. And it really um, helps fine tune your, your user profiles because this, what we're looking at right now might be a user profile somebody might like. And then there's the next case where they might just want the X, Y plot and the, and the, and the measures graph below it. And, and, and maybe if you didn't have that little function where you could just with a space bar, you would have had to save an entirely another uh, an, an entire another, you know, uh, user profile without it, right? So yeah. it's it's just a way to fine tune it and make it even more powerful, right? And it's one for me. Many times I don't necessarily want to look at the storyboard, but I don't want it gone. Exactly. So I think that's where it, the the power of this space bar is. It lets you toggle that item on and off. Perfect. Um, Perfect. Something for me, I use it when I first when Emiliano announced it. I thought, oh, this will be kind of neat. And now that I've used it some and, and really played with it, I realize how powerful of a feature this one is. You're going to see um, it. And when, when I start showing some of mine, you're going to see it a lot as well. And I, I also thought it was a, that's kind of cool, gee whiz. You know, maybe maybe uh, maybe that's something somebody might really like. And, and it turned out I was that guy. So, so yep. uh, and I think a lot of other people will be as well. Um, so what I thought was kind of neat, this, both of these profiles, the friction circle ones, work for everybody, whether you have a full logger or a solo. This will work with your data. Um, and the reason is, the is because it's it's based on GPS standard you know, GPS channels, right? So it, yep. this one, even if you don't grab the download, download the data of the, oh, the throttle position and the shocks and all that stuff that's in mats, this one will work within anybody. So if you use this one. Yep, and, th and that was my hope is that people will grab these profiles and start playing with their data and using Race Studio 3 to do it. So if we go to the next one or one of the next ones I have here, we can go back to load another profile. And let's hop into one that I just called GPS channels because this is one that I made up um, when I first started playing with Race Studio 3 and putting these together. I said, geez, people are going to maybe have trouble trying to figure this out. So I said, well, let's make a profile for people and share it. So here what we have is a, it's a different look and some, some additional information. So we have um, our time distance plot across the top with longitudinal acceleration and speed, two of the channels that, you know, Roger always coined speed as your money channel. 
and longitudinal g-force that's like brake pressure so if you have a solo and you don't have brake pressure this gives you really great data to evaluate your performance um, i went and put a friction circle in because this is something that we want so often you've got a track map our storyboard and something that i use at different times is a histogram down here of um, speeds just to look at a track and kind of say, is this a really fast track? Is this a slow track? How does this thing go? Um, and give us an idea to kind of compare things to, to see what they look like. Because certainly a place like uh, Club Motorsports is going to look pretty different than a session at Road America or maybe Sebring. Um, so here, and this is one I, I should have looked and I don't remember if I added functionality for the space bar. So. We can try it, and I didn't turn anything to turn off in this one. Um, so let's let's add it. Let's add it really quickly, and then resave it. Uh, let's take the the storyboard away and and save it that way. So, so you, we, you right clicked in right the storyboard, click, pick our settings, and then we can go in and say hide on spacebar. Okay, and then and if try. we want to save a profile and tr try it, just to make sure it works first. Then he's going to hit the spacebar. And boom, there. So it's working now, and it's a change, right? So now, now, yep. now, whenever you make a change to your profiles, maybe change a color, change, you know, whatever, then go back up to where he's heading now. Go ahead and talk us through saving that. Yeah, here's our gear icon. We're going to pick it, and then we're going to say save this profile. And depending on how the processing speed of your computer and how much stuff you have open, you'll notice that there, there it doesn't come up and say profile is done. But if you start to kind of click away right when you did it, there might be a little hesitation in the cursor. And, uh, but yeah. it's, it's two or three seconds is, is typically what I, what I have been seeing. So. Yep. Same for me. Okay. So um, one of the other ones that I think is pretty neat with um, Ray Studio 3 is having the ability to put your track map on an image, a satellite image from all the different ways. And we talked about that, but where I find it really powerful too, is if we turn off the satellite image, we can then colorize this and we can choose a color channel. Um, another one, of my, I have a lot of favorites in Race Studio 3. Another one of them is this search bar because yeah, it makes it, you know, if you guys have played with my data samples at all, there's so many channels, it becomes a chore to try to find things. Um, so I love this, that we can go in and put break. Here's our brake pressure channel. And now we have brake pressure on our map. We can zoom to it. We can look at it, yell at the driver that he needs to trail brake more because we have this great graphical image. Um, and then if you've seen it, the driver comes back with his bingo answers of the car wasn't right, blame the mechanic, engineer problem. This guy also always blames the data guy. You know, that's how those I'm, I'm looking at that braking zone right there. And I think there's the, some work the driver could do on his brake pressure. I think, you know, maybe <laughs> a little bit. So uh, just another great way that you can take this profile and work it in two different ways. Um, okay. You mentioned the you you uh, you you saved. You've been changing to different profiles. You, you, you fixed one, you adjusted one and you saved it. And yep. then we also talked about, and uh, and no doubt it's been in the chat, the you, uh, any allowing anybody to go ahead and download these profiles and put them into their own Race Studio three. But but you you created a document, and maybe we can link it. I think it's I think I might have seen it go by in the links in the chat. But talk a little bit about the document you created that you've shared with a number of people that uh, to give a little uh, you know some directions on how to do this in case they haven't done it, make them feel a little more comfortable. I don't have it yeah. to show it by the way, but uh, yep. just tonight. I made a simple document in the. I see they just threw up the link for it. And it, what it does is it kind of walks you through the process. If you download these items that you can then grab it in how to get these in. And it's you, the gear icon up here drives a lot of the functions and profiles, all the functions and profiles. Um, so when yeah. you go in, you can there say you not load a profile, but import a there profile. And then when we get in and, here, and there they are, by the way, that's what it's going to look like once you've done it. I happen to have yep. done it uh, just recently. So that's what it's going to look like. You're going to highlight them all and, and, and oh, don't do it, please. Now, you know, but, but uh, <laughs> you, you, you would highlight them and hit, click on open and they would be added to your list at, yep. uh, on your stuff. So, okay. Another, I think it's one of the features that 
really stands Race Studio 3 apart from Race Studio 2 for anyone that has multiple computers. This is the process we used to have to do to get profiles on all of them is we'd have to export it, import it, move it around, whether we use a cloud service or a, um, a USB drive or whatever it may be. Um, you had the track, a lot of times it ends up being an SD card. Under the, the settings here, we can choose to share our profiles through the AIM cloud service with other computers of ours. Um, and we can choose to share specific ones or all of them. And that puts it up into your AIM cloud. And then you can grab it on another computer and have it so you have the same profile all the time. And instead of having to shuffle those memory things, you, you can just do it once. Um, and that is all based on uh, mine up in the upper right corner is, you know, shows Roger is, is who's yep. logged in right now. And that's what you, some of you, um, you know, maybe have wondered why you're logging in. There's, a, there's all sorts of things that are happening the, that may be announced at some point soon, but this is one that is working now based on you, your login. Uh, I have a laptop that I run over here off the side and I always, um, I always do this and I always share them. So when I make a quick save to a profile, my laptop is already updated for that exact same change. So it's, uh, it, it's really, really a handy tool. So those of you with multiple computers, uh, you know, think about using this, uh, sharing your profile with your other PCs. It's, it's been a real kind of, not a whole game changer, but it's made things much, much easier. Yeah. Um, almost to the point that I want to like sometimes share my account details with people to do it and yeah, make it, you know, to like to move stuff make around. it even yeah. easier. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, so that, and it's just the first of, a, of, a, of a, any number of things that are going to be the aim cloud way of doing things here. That'll be uh, you'll be seeing more of that shortly. Yep. Um, a great question here. It, it showed up in the chat, but it asks Steve asks if um, anyone with an aim product has an aim cloud. No you have to sign up for it. So when you're, and I don't remember the exact process, Roger, you might have to help, is when you first download Race Studio 3 beta, you can go to this spot and it's gonna have just a helmet that's grayed out and you can go in there and sign up for it. And I, I think they've made it, uh, Emiliano maybe can help, uh, uh, the, but I think it's mandatory if you're on the beta side, if you're doing the beta work okay. that we're, we're asking, we're asking that you create a create a free account and uh, mm -hmm. and then your name will be up, up there. And you can, yep. can share amongst your stuff, so. Right. And um, uh, Emiliano just did just say a basic set of cloud services with a limited megabyte space is going to be free from AIM. Uh, yeah. And it's not meant it's it's no more mandatory, he says. So it's not you don't have to do it. But here's one of those things where it uh, where it will help you. I don't know why you wouldn't. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I look at it. and I think this is so great. Yeah, it's completely free. It works tremendous to do all this sharing. Um, but I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to. But if we okay. keep looking at our profiles is um, we can bring back our storyboard and let's load the next one. So again, I'm gonna go up to my gear icon. We're gonna to pick to load a profile. One of the ones I did the webinar on before is a quick um, biotelemetry profile. And this one, again, I, I mixed and matched my windows a little bit. I have a friction circle. I have a histogram that has the heart rate. I have a big um, XY scatter plot of my heart rate. And um, another great spot is we look at this one, and we go, well, what is the other measure here? And we can use our right click function on our settings and go in and ask for the labels on our two axes. So we can see what's in the scatter plot. And we come back and now we see it is heart rate versus GPS speed. And keep in mind that you just made that change. So if you wanted that change to always be there, of course, you would just go back up, hit the button and save the profile. Then those yep. uh, those uh, those uh, little little bits of words there telling you what the channels are will always right. be there. So, And that is something you're going to do a lot because as you work with this and you see the new features and you learn some more yep. things and, and you figure them out, you're going to go, hey, what if I did this? And you're going to add that feature. And you're going to do all those things. Um, so get used to saving those profiles and changing them around a lot because you're going to do it as you start to work with everything. 
there was a question that popped up that uh, I'm just going to go back to it while you're thinking about yeah. getting ready for the next one. And I, uh, Ian asks, is the AIM cloud data private until shared? The uh, Just so everybody understands, uh, the, the you know, we're pretty strongly private here in, in the States of uh, stuff that you have out there, uh, you know, being very, very private. In Italy, I th it seems to even be at another level. So if you have cloud data, it is private all the time. It's not even private until shared. It's uh, it's private all the time. The, Italy is, uh, there are some very, very strong rules from what I understand that, uh, and, and steps and processes they have to go through on things like this. So your uh, your data is gonna be 100% private and uh, and we can pretty much guarantee that. So, so keep that in mind, nobody, you know, if, if you give your login and information to like Matt was talking about, then somebody could get to it, obviously, but uh, it's there and AIM's not going to use it for anything. They're not selling it. They're not moving it around. They're not you know, doing anything with it, right? It's it's your data. Yeah. Um, the next question I see Peter asked that is a really great question and another really cool thing. Can you unlock uh, windows or parts of the program to go? Absolutely. So where you see that it says scatter here, it's going to look a little funny on my dual monitor, I think, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to try it because okay, okay. <laughs> things go a little bit weird. But if you have multi monitors, you can grab this tab and you see the hand on it. And then if you drag and drop it off to the next monitor, it undocks it and puts it on another spot. Um, it is really, really cool when you start getting into data and you're kind of dropping these things in different spots and it just expands the real estate you have to look at everything. It's a, it's a really nice feature. So yeah, you can completely do that. I, I, would, I am never concerned to do that particular function uh, other than when we're on Zoom and I'm sharing one screen. So that, that's the only reason I said uh, be a little, you yes. know, maybe be careful. It's, it's yep. only because of the Zoom projection. Yep. Um, one of the other features that's in this profile that's a little bit different than the other ones I showed is if you look over here, we have a second tab. I have a channels report here as well. And we can toggle back and forth. And this one um, is sort of your vehicle health kind of report. And the, the way Zoom is showing for me right now, Rod, oh, there we go. I can get the bottom of the screen and go across them. So now not only do we have our scatter plot, but we have a channels report. So a neat feature of these profiles is we're not stuck to just one kind of view up here, right? We have all our views. We have a time distance, we have a movie view, um, our track layout. We have all these things that we can do, including segment reports, channel reports, all those. We can nest these. And I'm giving you a little foreshadowing towards the one that Roger is going to share <laughs> in a couple minutes here. Um, again, this is one of the profiles that when I use it, I like to start turning on more channels. So we can use the method of have snap off, zoom out and we can put a whole bunch of data on the screen and see the trends across the session of what's going on and a neat feature is with the time distance that we have down here we can see the trends of how it goes up or down we can see dropouts in the data we can see it in the storyboard it adds a new component to how we look at things that we're not looking necessarily at one lap or one small slice we can see what happens through the course of uh, a run a session a day however you're looking at your data. Um, I think this is a really, really powerful new way of looking at data compared to what we did in Ray Studio 2. And I'm just gonna pop off Snap and we can go back to our best lap. I'm surprised there's no comments from the peanut gallery, the best lap isn't that good of a lap. Um, <laughs> Kyle's asking us a question we'll throw in here. Can you now open multiple duplicate tabs, i.e. motor health profile, driver coach profile, previously only used it, but it's... No, so profiles are the idea of a setup, but inside a profile, you can have multiple tabs. So let's make one. If we just throw in the movie tab here, so now we have a window with the movies. We could save this profile now. And this would be our profile. And when we, just to do it, and we'll show you, is if we open, oh, this is the, the momentary pause Roger was talking about. Exactly. Yep. I was a little bit quick there. If we open, we go back to one of our friction circles, and then we load this profile of, we were on biotelemetry. We'll see now we have that movies tab too. 
and the tab's not filled out because we didn't go through and do everything. Um, but you can see how it puts it all there. Um, Scott, great question. And another one I'm going to blame Roger for because I was always a white screen guy. I'm on my phone, everything I am. But yes, you can completely go to night mode, the dark mode. And again, it's in the settings button and it's your top one options. And then your plot color mode, you can change to dark. Say okay. And it pops up as a dark one. Um, Another neat thing with this dark mode is um, it goes through the profile, it gets saved with it. So if we resave this, it's going to make it dark mode. Yep. I have found personally, as I've used Ray Studio 3 a whole bunch, and I'm not sure personally why yet, sometimes I really like using dark mode. Sometimes I really like light mode. And it's made its way into my profiles as I'm using them. That certain things, I always go dark mode, light mode. Um, Robbie makes a great point that sometimes on a really bright day, the dark mode makes it easier to see your screen. And depending on your laptop, it's completely helpful. Let me ask um, you, uh, those of you in the chat that are watching this live right now, uh, he just changed it to, to, to the dark mode. Uh, is that project better on the with Zoom or was the white uh, the better way of doing it? I've only continued to use the light mode because I think it projects better for Zoom. I happen to really enjoy this view on, on when I'm actually doing data. So, so uh, oh, okay, dark mode is uh, uh, what, we're, what I'm getting back here is uh, either about the same or dark mode is better for some folks. So maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start to project some and, and do some Zoom stuff with, uh, with the dark mode a little bit more. So, okay. Very cool. Um, if we want to jump to another profile that I put together here, so I'm going to go back, load tire pressures. One of the webinars that I did with the tire pressures, um, I use this sort of global view and an idea that now I have four different scatter plots laid out with different channels in each one of them. Cause I have my left front, my right front, my right rear, my left rear. Um, this one, you can see, I don't have a time distance. I just have my storyboard. So this is where I started to figure out that instead of going to my laps and having to click all of these, I very quickly go laps, all laps, and now I have my global view. It turns on everything for me. That is one of those funny little time savers that ends up great. And then, you know, something we were just talking about dark mode. Let's flip this into dark mode again. So we go the gear, options, dark mode, say okay. So this is when I look at this, all of a sudden I look at this and it's more powerful to me. Yeah, I think and this is a better view. And to tie this back to being our user profiles and saving them, you'd, you'd want to, if you like that, save yep. it, right? Uh, and then you can save what, uh, when I'm in uh, some production data analysis stuff, I, I may have seven or eight profiles that I'm working in, in, in the, in the, uh, in the paddock area with a, with a team. And I find that I like a certain set of things, maybe these seven things I'm going to use all weekend. I end up making 14 profiles and I make, I make, uh, you know, engine health light, engine health dark. And so if I'm in the in the data room in the lounge in the trailer, uh, I'm looking at it in light background, maybe that it's okay. But if I'm out in the in the direct sunshine with a laptop that doesn't have the great, greatest screen, or it's really bright and shiny, uh, I, I, I bring up the dark mode. So uh, you, you can save them with different names with light and dark too. So and that's a great one, Roger. So if we go back here, instead of just save, we can save this as save as and then save it as the you know, whatever. I don't remember yeah, what the name uh, of it. It was tire pressure versus lat G. You yep. know, dark, dark. Tire pressure versus lat G. Dark. And then dark. There you go. And now you and have then, those options. And what I like about profiles is when I save them as is now we're in that profile because we can see the name here. Yep. We can go back to our original one and say load higher pressure versus lat G. You may have say, saved it as we, dark. So we did. So now this is how we fix it because I'll admit I make a ton of mistakes as I'm laying these out, as I'm learning how it all works and goes through. So let's change this one back to light. 
then resave. Then resave. And now you're going to have so, the two, two of them with, uh, with two different versions of light and dark. Yep. And to Roger's point before is when we talked about snap and not and the laps is now we saved it with all our laps enabled. So we just saved ourselves more time. We're not building a profile. We're not building a view. We're not turning on laps with a click of a button. And let's go to another profile to pull this up. Let's load it. So we go back to the biotelemetry one. And then we come back to our dark with all the laps on. Hopefully it doesn't make me a liar. And look, with one click, we loaded all this data. It is so powerful and such a time saver for yourself. If you're, if you're doing your own data or you're doing data for somebody else, you save, you know, in the course of the day, it's those minutes that become really important. Um, and it's not just the time you save, although that is uh, obviously critical. Mm -hmm. To me, it's the, it's the stress that has taken off of me, right? It's, uh, I, I have been able to spend some time here in my office, tinkering around, getting everything kind of set up the way I want to. And when I go to the track, it's one less stressful time. It's one less stressful thing in a very stressful time of being, okay, I, I want to check my engine hill stuff. I want to do my driver stuff. I want to do my handling stuff, whatever it happens to be. And, I, I'm, and I'm just clicking away and doing it. I don't have to worry yeah. about trying to set stuff up again. How did I get to that channel? What was that channel called, right? And, you know, it's, it makes Absolutely. it much easier. I want to show you one more profile that when I made it, I looked at it in the new views. And I just said, oh, wow, this is cool. How come I never thought of this before? Yeah, if you go all the way to the bottom down there, there's a, there's a profiles webinar tab that I, that, uh, yeah, if you click there, it's the two tests we were going to use this we today. Go. I forgot to share that with you before we started. <laughs> no problem. Um, here's our other, uh, another set of data. It's from Road Atlanta. And one of my jobs as data guys to look at vehicle health and in the cars we run, um, the Lambda functions are really important because sometimes you lose an O2 sensor. Sometimes you, um, you have whatever the problem is. So in the center of this profile, one of the things that I always looked at, and I'm just going to mess this profile up on this for a minute. So I'm going to remove these windows. And this is, this is going to display a little bit of the power of profiles. So I, I took two things out. Through Zoom, sometimes it's, these... it's hard. Yeah, there's always that little, there you got it. Yeah, you got it. I think you got it. If not, I'll, I'll do it. Yep. Let me, let me right. take it for you. All right. Let me do it for you. There you go. Resize our storyboard. So in the past, the way I would always check lambdas, I'd go across a number of laps and I would pick a spot where we're at full throttle for a good period, um, come in and look at what my lambda was. On these cars, you want to be eight, six, eight, seven, eight, eight, depending on the motor and the, the tune and everything else. Um, so here we see it's, it's 0.87. That's a car that's running really good. And I'd say, okay, that's good. But you'd have to go through and you'd have to pick another lap and, and check it through the session. Um, gets a little bit tedious, right? So with this profile, I'm going to pull it back up because we never saved it. So we don't lose that original profile. We're, oh, we're in it. So let's load yep. another one. Come back to it. So now we have that same information here. We can make that same check. But we have a scatter plot with lambda to throttle position. Or, um, yep. yep. And then we have a histogram of it. And if we go and we, oh, I was in snap, and we zoom out. What's pretty cool is that now we have this histogram, and the histogram shows our, the bins of how much time it was in that area. So we look at it and we go, yep, that looks about right. That's a good reading. And we can look at this scatter plot across the whole session and say, yes, that's right. So I looked at it and I went, this is a really neat way to take a global view of a big set of data and say, are there outliers? Are there a lot of spots that look wrong? And very quickly we can look at it and say, no, there's not. This took something that, you know, maybe it took me five minutes to really investigate before. And now in a few clicks, I can look at it really quick and say, is this good or bad or how does it go um again, again and, and again very very cool that you might go to the track next time and you might find 
adding another window of something else makes it even more clear for you yeah. and you can just add it save it and then you and you build and you, and you continue to create these and 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 have them uh change and get better and better absolutely and as people download these ones play with them make their own is profiles are living things they're not always the same thing unless maybe we're looking at a channel report you know that when a channel reports a channel report you're looking for that tabular data but in these sorts of visual uh, profiles you need to make them what works for you in your method and maybe on the car you're working on the driver you're working with in your own driving there's specific things that you really want out of it and this is a way to work towards that and sometimes a profile is a, a weekend kind of thing, not a season thing. Sometimes there's like channel reports for engine health. That's you always use the same ones. But maybe you have a weekend where you're focused on braking or something different. And then you you dig into the just those. And then I'm just going to use my favorite button again. Go back to just the best lap. And then, Roger, if you want to grab yours and show a neat way to kind of tie all these different ideas together. Okay, I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to, Matt, just so you can be able to click around and do, you know, chat in the chat. I've taken the, I've taken the mouse away from you just so right. you, so, so you can uh, tinker if you wish. The, um, uh, everything Matt has, at, has talked about is, is pretty much the same stuff that I do. The, uh, the only, I just want to show you maybe a different thought process. I haven't even settled on is it better or is it worse? Is it is it uh, the way I might do it or not? I just want to show you just an overall bigger picture of something that the way I started with them at least, um, and and whether or not it's the right thing to do. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this test. I'm gonna go back to the test we had that you have the ability of uh, downloading in the link below for YouTube or over from the chat box, and go back to this Club Motorsports uh, data so data, data file, and um, and and let's get that up and loading, and then. Um, what I have done is instead of having just a little single tab here is, is it maybe if you have enough, the only downside of this is maybe you don't have enough computing power or, you know, the, the it might slow things down a little bit. I haven't been able to test it on, uh, uh, on computers that are in that kind of setup that way. But if I come in and, and the one I've got is, is, is called uh, Roger main is the one that I've just been kind of playing with and show you maybe a little bit of what it kind of looks like. So let's load that one. Oh, there, I have to click on it, I guess. And what it's doing is I've opened up um, virtually every function that's available to me across here. Matt talked about it. You could have two or three. I've basically, I've done a, a measures graph or a time distance graph. I've got a split report. I've got a, an XY or a scatter plot. I've got the movies tab open, histograms and channel reports, all of, all ready to go, right? Uh, let's just kind of start on this time distance one. Uh, it, not as much, you know, reading the data here, but let's, let's, uh, just look at how it's kind of laid out. I Maybe I have a client or the way I like to look at data is, and I've got smarty cams. Boy, I've got my, this is a pretty main part of what we're doing now. So I can come down here and I'm clicking around and I can see exactly what I, what I did in the car. And, uh, and you know, one, of the, one good example here is, is I've got lateral Gs and I've got steering position. And I see this loss of lateral Gs and I see this, this spike of, of where he had to catch the car here with his with his hands, right? So I come down here and I say, oh, you know, what exactly happened there, right? And now we can we can watch his hands inside do this little correction, and we can go back and forth and we can kind of start to look at it, and see, you know, a little bit better way of doing it by having that video there, the uh, the 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 measures graph down below, the track map up here to know exactly where you're at, and an XY plot of just a G sum. And then what I've done is I've colorized this and the third color, what I call a third, you know, that colorized or third channel is steering position based on the, uh, the lateral G's. It's something I just started playing with the last couple of days of what's a good visual way of seeing understeer oversteer, right? You know, we have other ways of maybe calculating that, but uh, kind of cool. But if you've got a, if you've got a, uh, a dark blue line over here that, it, that should be high G's, and you still have high G's and yet you're steering, you know, since I've got it colorized with steering, that blue should be all over here if it's if it's neutral and all red over here and everything in between. If you've got a, a color that is all by itself running way over here, you, you, there's, a, there's a change there, right? So if I click on that, I can see that, uh, you know, maybe this is right when this is starting to happen. You know, just, a, just another way of looking at it, right? And, and I uh, think 
a plot. Another thing that you did that's that's different than all the friction circles I showed is you did it with the lines, which I, I think is another it it displays the data really differently, but for different people, it's one that is really powerful. There you go. Uh, and the other thing I have come to do a lot of is the same thing that Matt was talking about. I I, I use the space bar uh, function a lot. So if uh, I set the space bar and I got rid of the the uh, the storyboard across the bottom, right, and uh, and I bring it back. Uh, I'm going to go through a couple of these here really quickly just to show you how how uh, how I might do do some of these different ones. I have found the split report is kind of cool when it's just the split report, but sometimes you want a little more, right? Uh, so uh, here's the split report. And if I want, if I see that segment nine has some information about it, I come in here and I, and I've go ahead and thrown up a small measures graph and storyboard and channels if I want to change some stuff really quickly. And, uh, and then I see where, where, where nine is at in the map. I've got all these little preview channels that uh, AIM has built for me kind of cool. But in this case, uh, the 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 uh, the space bar, I I get to oops maybe it's uh, maybe it's not set up correctly. I did re-import all of this, so uh, maybe what I want to do is go ahead and turn off turn off some of these things. I want to hide that one within the space bar. I want to right click on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide uh, hide this one when the space bar gets pressed. Click on OK. I want to hide the storyboard. Come on, where are you? Oh, there it goes. It's already being hidden. That one did work. And maybe I even the channels. And this uh, this might be just a, a, a pretty cool way of running your split report where you get rid of all of these things and you go full size on your uh, your actual report when you press this, the, the, the button, right? So now you can see everything kind of the normal way that you've, you're used to, but then you press the button and you have some other data to, to, to kind of look at and, and understand maybe what, how, you wanna, how you wanna attack this, right? This little screen over here, I always look at this guy and it's like, okay, well, look at that. That's a, you know, something happened here. He was waiting for a car. It's way out of the norm you know, kind of this little measures graph in miniature over here on the side. And it highlights which lap it is. It's lap 12 that that was odd. So I'd come right over and I would disable lap 12, you know, and uh, and then pick a, you know, pick a different segment. And you can pick, you know, 13. Well, that that lap was no good. You can quickly clean up your, your, uh, your split reports this way. And, but sometimes I don't want that stuff there. So again, some options for you. Um, some people just would like to see the split report. I threw some more at it, right? Another thing that I've done here that you, it's kind of small on this one, but there might it might be some other spots. You see the black line that's uh, all by itself down here in the in the storyboard. It's it's a something I've always liked to do is is have that bigger picture of water temp, oil temp, you know, what, you know, something that uh, you kind of want to have a quick glance at. This happens to be oil tank temperature on, on Matt's car. And uh, you can see what it was when he first started. And then as he as he's did, made the run, you see how it came up and, and peaked and then the yellow flag pit stopped, whatever. It came down a little bit and then rose back up and, and gone out. I typically on my storyboard, it's speed only and then maybe a temperature or something that I want to track just of a quick visual. So uh, just another way of looking at it. The um, other thing I've done that's a little bit different is the map. I like that start finish line to be on there. You know, you're at the track, you already know it, but me as a data guy that may be looking at data that, uh, that I don't see all the time. Sometimes I don't know exactly where that's at. So you can come in here and, and, and right click on that particular, um, uh, function and go into settings. And one of the things you've got there is show tr track timing lines and it's off by default. So if, if you wanted to see that, check that and save that into your profile. And then you get the, the start finish line where that's at. And if you used hard splits, the, the splits would be there as well. Uh, let's go to the scatter plot really quickly. We'll just kind of run through the rest of these real fast. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that third dimension, right? This one here happens to be throttle position on a GSUM. And uh, so you can kind of see where he was at full throttle. The throttle position sensor, I think, is a little me a little messy on this. But um, um, and then the uh, in this case, it's a it's a G sum. So probably lateral G's and longitudinal G's are the two channels I might want. Maybe a G sum channel. Um, Kyle asked the question there that uh, how do you get speed only in the storyboard? If you right click and you go to settings, you can tell it you want allow different channels in the panels, and then 
I'm going to cancel out of that. And then you would come up to whichever channel that you want down there since, uh, uh, since speed was the one I wanted. If you right click on there, you can, I can hide it in the storyboard. If, I, if it wasn't there right now, an option would be add, you know, add this channel to the storyboard and, and only showing that channel in the storyboard and the other channels in the, in the measures graph. So you have that option of, uh, of uh, you know, differentiating what channels you're going to show where. And um, movies, uh, again, the, this one here, I, I like a big map. Uh, when I'm working with people, a lot of times they, you know, they, it's really important, especially junior drivers, where, where exactly am I on that corner, right? And then have that, and then whatever basic data files you want here. And again, I've got the oil temp, uh, I've got the, the, uh, uh, the hide button with the space bar. It happens to be just the, uh, just the storyboard in this, on this particular look, so. And histograms. I think, that's also, I, I think in that the movies one, Roger, is it's a good display of how in Race Studio Three we only have one map anymore. It, the, you, the, it, yeah, it's it, been simplified down to one map that shows your driven line. You can colorize it, and it has your segments. Yeah, and to add a, add a little bit that we we can put this twice, right? And I know mm -hmm. some of your some of yours, you'll you'll retain that map in a full size smaller one over here, which we can add, and then yep. make a big one over here with that maybe has the splits, and the other one doesn't. You know, it's colorized to a certain channel. You can have multiple maps, but what Matt is really focusing in on is there's no longer a, a GPS based map and a, a calculated map and and uh, all of that confusion that happens. It, it's all built into one one map style, mm -hmm. a great point, okay. Histograms a little bit different here that I, I kind of liked. And um, the, uh, I, I like the histograms, uh, they're, they're valuable to me. You have an option of having uh, your histograms in your normal bins and you can kind of see them uh, ghosted here in, in color here in the background. That bin, and if you hover over it, that's a bin of speed between 85 and 90 miles an hour. He's there 14% of the time, uh, but I, there, there's an option here if you right click and go into settings. And of course you can save these as part of your user profiles. Uh, show bar values, I, I do like that, that we're seeing that down there. And then show histogram as either lines or as bars. I'll change it back to bars. Uh, kind of the standard way of looking at histograms. And, and I tend to, it's the way AIM's always done it. So, you know, having those standing straight up, you can have them come, you know, uh, horizontally from the side as, both, as Matt showed, I think in some of his, but I tend to have just happened upon liking this way. But, but uh, I, I kind of like um, having it uh, lines and, I'll, and I'm gonna change it back and show you why. So if from bars back to lines. And if I open a second lap, what I really like about the lines is, is when you had the histogram bars, they, they start to, you know, the, there's one in front of the other and, the, and they're colorized and you can kind of see them pretty well. But boy, when you just get the lines, you can start to see the difference and uh, it just kind of shows up a little bit clearer with the color of the lap. So I kind of like that way. You do what you wish, save it. Um, in this particular case, I've got a, a, a space bar that gets rid of the channel selection, right? And the... Um, uh, and the storyboard to get this down to just what you really want to see. And then I hit this, uh, the space bar again and I, and I can change channels and, and, and change laps really quickly. Save it however you wish. It's, it, it's part of what we're chatting about here. And then, oops, I missed it. There it is. And then I tinker with uh, you know, channels report a little bit, you know, change some different things. I've changed the colors a little bit. So men's are, uh, you know, maxes are red, men's are green. If I had an average, I've made them yellow. Uh, the other thing I tend to like to do is, is, uh, and I haven't, I, I thought I had this saved into the, uh, into my profile, but it may, maybe uh, since I had to reload it, I didn't have it. I like the little histogram look inside of the channel report. It gives me a quick look. I can look at this one, that minimum battery voltage. Well, you know, why did that one, is that one low? Why is this one low? You know, it immediately takes my eye to, to, you know, there was a yellow flag in here, right? Right in this area. So, um, so we can look at our minimum or maximum RPMs, trans temp, it was coming up, went back down, just, you know, lowered a little bit during the yellow, went right back up. Uh, I happen to like that little histogram feature in there. And I think you can save that into your user profiles. So, okay. Um, it, and I don't see any other questions as we've kind of been going, but it's um, when you open up two laps, you, know, um, you end up with, uh, you know, the video side by side, you got the two lines here. 
maybe uh, maybe you'd want to come in and change it from uh, from the the segments, you know, as uh, as Matt showed, but to uh, you know color per channel. And the in oops, I'm sorry, I don't want that. I, oops, doo -doo 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 -doo, I want to change that to that. And then you can zoom in and see now you know, where the driver was per per the color of the lap that you've done. So everywhere I go now, we can see the two dots together and see exactly how it happened. So. Um, Matt, do you have anything else to kind of add there as we kind of start to, to, to close this one down? No, I think this is a great way to show how you can change your process that you can put, you can do single things. If you are a real linear step-by-step, -step, if you do the check, you know, if you have a checklist to go through, you can do it um, with everything on one screen this way, if this is how you work. And really, I think what people have to take away from today is make these yours, play with them, use them figure out what way of doing things speaks to you. Because I think we showed a lot of different ways to look at all the, the data and figure out what works for you that speaks to you to really make your data work for you. Because if it doesn't work for you, it's not worth doing. Certainly. And, uh, and, and is it better to have a bunch of functions up? Yeah, that's kind of my go to, my gut was my go to, but I'm thinking that it might be, it might be even, might be even better is to get used to uh, coming in and just loading and only having one function loaded, there's probably some speed elements there that uh, that, that might show themselves with huge data files and some other things. I, I haven't been able to test that. So might want to might just play around a little bit. My experience, um, I've gone both ways and I find it's easier for me to keep things a little bit tidy if I have singles. There you go. But then I have some that I really like to use uh, as my initial check with the channels report and then the, the time distance plots that are important to me for the for certain things that I can go and grab them, you know, check my channels report, check that, and I have my vehicle health all done in one. So I, I've been using both styles of putting them all together. But either way, it's kind of my closing way of thinking of, of, of using these things is go ahead and start working with them. Go to the track, do do them in your office as you're kind of you know go through a, a mock data you know analysis session, and you're going to come over here and you're going to end up saving them again and saving them again. What I would do, and, and this is just a uh, yeah, we got the cloud now and that you know, that's helping a little bit. But as you're kind of playing around, I would continue to come over here. You're getting done. You've you finished up the weekend or that that night, you know, or whatever. I tend to like to come in here and uh, and export these profiles and just send them send them out to a to a thumb drive or uh, you know or something. And so, if I'm going to go work with a cart team this weekend, and maybe I do things a little bit different than some, but I'll work with an off road race truck and then a cart team and a motorcycle and a and a road race and then an oval team, right? I end up making profiles that are designed around different forms of motorsports and different things I want to do. And so I end up saving them out and I'll have, and I'll, I'll add the qual qualifier here of cart, you know, and friction circle and cart and, and Lambda or whatever it happens to be. And then when I go ready to go to the track and work with a customer that has uh, in that world in whatever form of motorsport it is, I then load the profiles that are built around what their typical needs are, right? So that's another way of just keeping these things saved and, and keeping different ones. Uh, you may not run into that because you, you know, you're always doing your form of motorsports as a, as a single user. So keep that in mind though, always back them up. Back them up, keep them off to the side. You're ready to, uh, ready to check out uh, and reload them. If there's a problem, you, you, you drop your computer at night and uh, uh, off, off the, head of the hood of the car and you had to go to Best Buy and buy a new computer in the next day, right? And, and, and being able to get yourself right back to where, you're, where you were is pretty, pretty handy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So then let me jump over to here. Perfect. There we go. Let's talk about as we kind of close it up, we were, we were going to go into live data, which we did. The... Um, uh, all of the stuff that we've talked about as far as links and, and for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, watching this later, uh, just down in the description box will, will be all of the links that we, we talked about and showed, including that document that uh, Matt put together that uh, talks about how to import these and move them around and, and, and some other, uh, some, some quick tips on using uh, profiles and, and, and starting to use those that way. Um, uh, this video will be up in a, within an hour or so, we'll be up on, uh, on YouTube and be able to, to, to look at even those that, you that were here live, we went through a lot of stuff fairly quickly, and uh, and we do understand that. We know it. We but we uh, we depend on your ability to go into YouTube and say, well, you know, he talked about that about 20 minutes in. Let's go back and rewatch that and try it on your own computer and being able to pause. So uh, so that's why we sometimes go fairly quickly. So 
Let's talk about customer support. You know, we're, we're a customer support company that happens to sell racing electronics, as we like to say. Um, give us a call. If you're, if you're having any troubles, if you have any questions, you know, uh, you'll have some contact information from, from Matt and me here in just a moment uh, directly. If not, give us a call on the 800 number and uh, let us see what we can do to help you. The, uh, the other thing is that, boy, we're getting into race season. And those sprinter vans are uh, are warmed up and uh, heading to tracks every weekend, sometimes during the week. So uh, look for uh, look for uh, one of our sprinter vans at a track near you and uh, and come up and say hi to the guys. OK, next week, what we're going to talk about is using data to confirm aerodynamic gains. Not all of us have uh, access to a wind tunnel, right? Uh, a, a friend of mine, I've known him for quite some time, A.J. Hartman is uh, we've been talking with him about doing some of these and um, um, he's big deep into the aero side of things. He builds, uh, you know, splitters and wings and stuff that he sells, but, but uh, he also uses data and he's built a, that's a screen capture from a video he made a while back uh, that talked about uh, using data to confirm aerodynamic gain. And um, uh, so he, back at that point, he was using a solo, just the GPS channels. Uh, and that's, we're just going to kind of go over some of the stuff he talked about in that video and maybe some updates. He's got, uh, he's got an MXG in his car now that he's using and, um, and, and maybe he's got some, uh, some updates to that. So uh, AJ is going to be with us here uh, a week from today and he's going to chat about um, making a change to your wing, a change to your, you know, your front splitters, whatever it happens to be and getting some data pre and post and the coming back in and okay, you know, did the, did the car, you know, did it did it corner better with with X number of G's, and yet our speed was, uh, you know, uh, the same top speed with more downforce. You know, did you did you create less drag but more downforce? You know, those kind of things, right? So we're going to chat about it. And uh, AJ is a is a good guy. I've really enjoyed chatting with him. He's a he's a smart guy. And and uh, if you go to his, if you just type in AJ Hartman Arrow in uh, in YouTube, he's got a page on there that he. Uh, the last four or five videos, I think, maybe there's been one or two since, but there was a whole, um, there was a couple there where he went in to, and actually was taking video and talking about the, 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 the entire, you know, using a wind tunnel and showing how it works and, and making changes and showing what those differences were. Pretty interesting stuff for those of us racers that maybe don't have that option to do that. So looking forward to, to doing that. So um Contact information for Matt and I, if you want to chat with Matt about some of the stuff that he talked about, uh, or me, there's, uh, there's some contact information. Um, Matt, do you have anything else to add as we're kind of closing this one up? No, I think if people enjoy these, if they see different ways to do it, like shoot us a note, let us know how you're interacting with the profiles and what you're finding powerful. Perfect. This is, this is what we do. We really like it. And but there's so much to learn. And uh, so often I learn from everybody that communicates back. And again, we weren't uh, necessarily telling you how to do data analysis with this particular you know, one. We, yeah, we touched into it a few times, but it was more just how to lay some options on how to lay out your user profiles, make them kind of work for you, right? That's what it's really about. It's uh, what you will like is not something that I might like. And, uh, but we're gonna give you a few, few user profiles to start up with by downloading those and loading them on, you grab the data that we used and, uh, and try it out and start adjusting. Yeah, I think you'll, uh, think you'll enjoy finding out what you're, what you're doing. Um, uh, we, we're not doing, a, I see a note in the chat talking about is AJ gonna be on Thursday or Tuesday. AJ is gonna be on Tuesday. We're, we're only doing these uh, webinars, at least full-time uh, every, every Tuesday. So AJ will, be, uh, AJ will be here on the 13th, Tuesday the 8th. Thir Tuesday the 13th. We might do some on Thursdays here uh, at some point if we find a topic we want to do, but so far just scheduled on just every Tuesday. And by the way, some of you that uh, do come here live, the emails have been coming out from Zoom pretty regularly lately on the, the one hour before reminder. So I've uh, been, been pretty happy about that. So hopefully they've got that fixed. So again, I appreciate everybody coming. Thank you, Matt. Uh, as always, it's a, it's a joy to have you here. Lots of uh, good preparation and, and being ready to, to chat about this. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. And um, thanks, for thanks everybody for coming. Thanks to our AIM staff, that, uh, the guys here in the background that have been answering your questions. I appreciate them guys very much. A lot of people with a lot of work to do that uh, come in and help us every, uh, every Tuesday afternoon. So thanks a lot, everybody. We would look forward to seeing you with AJ uh, a week from today. Talk to you soon. Bye.